in 2019, it's the Mediterranean Regional Office of the WHO established a new approach for supporting countries in enhancing the national institutional capacity for evidence-informed policymaking. It was called the Integrated Multi-Concept Approach for Evidence-Informed Policymaking. The novelty in the approach is in bringing together different streams of thought and different areas of work under one umbrella. The knowledge translation processes for policymaking that involve the higher level policies in the country and also policies about public health and major issues. The use of health technology assessment as a tool for policymaking. National programs for guideline development and adaptation, as well as using the data and data systems for policymaking as a source of evidence from surveys, from routine health information system and other sources of evidence together. All of them as one approach for evidence-informed policymaking. This approach was endorsed in the same year by the countries of the region. And that has been the basis of the work of the WHO in supporting countries. I'm really pleased that this also has resulted in further demand from the countries, enhancement in areas of work, establishment or a strengthening of health policy units in, uh, in a few ministries of health of the region, as well as enhancing capacity, technical capacity of the institutions in the region in supporting national policymaking. I think the WHO's MLO is doing something that very important and policy relevant work for a member state. Um, the use of evidence to inform policy making is something that can be very impactful and is something that we need to learn from each other. And I think the Bishop's MLO is in a very good position trying to harmonize, trying to synchronize the effort of its individual country members in the region. Putting evidence into the hands um, of policymakers is really essential if we want to improve public health and the life of uh, populations in general. Here, EMRO's program for enhancing evidence-informed policymaking and NetTP plays a crucial role. As a member of the evidence synthesis and health guideline community, the work of um, the WHO EMRO's um, program for enhanced evidence policy making is critical. Um, to bring evidence into clinical practice and into public health decisions. With the network being stronger and with really the tools which are being developed, with the guidance, with the experience of uh, so many countries which are now part of the network with the academic institutions, with the policymakers, what has to happen is that really we need to see a stronger implementation, a stronger system capacity to take forward the interventions which we know are really, really generating health gains. Obviously, there are no solutions for every single problem, so therefore, this process can also stimulate innovations and additional research and partnerships in really that pathway of accelerating our progress. I was involved in this discussion early on, seven years ago at headquarters, when WHO was talking about how it could promote health technology assessment uh, throughout the world. And to see it being implemented in this region is really very impressive. Um, this meeting brought together experts from the region, but also experts uh, from various parts of the world, uh, different uh, HTA bodies and academics and policymakers and others. So it was a real Real pleasure to see this dialogue take place and to see that progress is being made. The work in particular on the glossary will help with making terminology clear, making concepts clear, which is needed for those who use guidelines that are often developed centrally by either WHO or other organizations and use them to make them most relevant, context specific, for countries in the region. Having worked in this field for over two decades, I think this work does fill an important gap and it synergizes with other work that is done in the field. So um, I'm very happy to be part of this and feel that um, it will really advance the field.
they have an action plan um, that countries are taking forward in terms of planning and implementing various activities um, in knowledge translation um, and in putting um, and establishing institutions that are really uh, playing the intermediate role between research and policy to enhance evidence-informed policy making, um, both in, in policy but also in practice. In terms of next steps when it comes to EMRO's evidence-informed decision-making program, um, the program is so much looking at uh, integrating the various work streams of the evidence ecosystem, having a multi-concept approach and pushing this kind of innovative approach further and looking into bringing different elements um, that are important, different sources of evidence together, such as data, um, but also guidelines, HTA, is really an area um, where EMRO at country level can make a major difference in view of bringing the evidence um, that decision makers require to the table. We really need to see how this bridge between the knowledge, academia, and then policy can deliver for the benefits of the people. There's a big opportunity to partner with um, other organizations such as the Guidelines International Network, the Great Working Group, and um, Cochrane to synergize the findings um, with what is known in the field and then move forward in order to make um, um, sure that the gaps that exist are actually being filled um, together. That there's more work to be done in terms of information sharing about the health, te health technology assessment processes, but we are learning how to share information and learn from each other, so that is a very positive outcome. EMRO leverages the incredible skills in its country offices and its rich relationships with ministries of health and other partners at the country level to have a, a bespoke approach for every country. This is a very diverse region. You have some high-income countries with uh, tremendous amounts of capacity. You have a number of low-income countries with very unstable security situations and many resource constraints. Each one has strengths that can be built on and key gaps that would be the logical next steps in terms of filling them. So what I love here is that EMROS found some common approaches, but also has the mechanism through the country offices to take each country from where it currently is to what is the next logical step in terms of upping its game in evidence-informed policymaking. I'm a policymaker in a country that has resources, a lot of resources. If I'm in a country that in, in, is in a country with limited resources, I'm talking about not just money, I'm talking about human resources, technical capabilities. If I'm in a country, a policymaker, in a country affected by emergency, in all of these contexts, evidence-informed policymaking is a must. It has to be done. It's a help to the countries. And we are working with the countries in a way that all countries, with whatever the circumstances are, can benefit from these approaches and also can share experiences so that other countries can learn from those and enhance the capacity and enhance the way of work for better decisions for the health of the people in the countries and in the region as a well. whole.